Today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in March and whether you should read them too. So I read 12 books in total in March, two of which were short stories. One was just a plain fiction, two were fantasy, four were romance, and one of those being a YA romance. One was nonfiction, and one was a YA thriller. So we are going to start with talking about romance, and the YA romance book I read this month was If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan, and I gave this book a five stars. I loved it so much. We're following Autumn, and it starts abruptly with kind of what's going to happen at the end and then you jump back in time for years so you're following her throughout high school i think laura nolan did a really beautiful job in her writing of how she portrayed the mind of a high schooler and like the differences of a freshman to a senior it was really beautiful i think she also portrayed the emotions and feelings of the main character very very well i enjoyed it so much i wish we would have gotten more of her and like the love interest i was rooting for but apparently the sequel is from like his point of view but i have heard people kind of got let down from it because it was only for like a little bit but i will also say the ending ends like very abruptly and it does make you want to like read another book about it so i probably will pick up the book in the future it was very beautifully told it was very nostalgic and it was extremely easy to relate to the character i don't have like many bad things to say about this book although when i did read it i didn't know going into it that it was more of a sad story and that kind of threw me for a loop it does touch on like mental health and sensitive topics this book actually made me bawl my eyes out i did not think i would be like bawling with this book and normally if i cry from like a book or a movie or just like in general it's like a single tear or like light crying but no I was ugly crying because of this book. So if you like YA romance, I would definitely recommend this book to you. And if you want kind of like a sad emotional read, this is also a good book for you. Five stars, that's all we have to say. All right, the other three romances I read in March were Magnolia Parks, the last three books in the series, and wow i was just like so emotionally destroyed i do think these books would be classified as fiction but they're in the romance section at barnes and noble so they're just gonna be romance in this video too i read the third book in the series this month magnolia parks the long way home and i really really enjoyed this book if you don't know anything about this series and the magnolia parks books you get two different characters perspectives magnolia and bj and this is the third book and the second book of magnolia and bj's perspectives i enjoyed this book a lot i connected to the characters more i kind of got annoyed in the middle because it was kind of just dragging out for me and it was like the third book we do get some emotional trauma dumping and get more context as to why the characters are the way that they are i did enjoy the relationship more in this one and i'm not gonna spoil anything but there are many relationships in these books and if you know what relationship i'm talking about good for you if you don't i'm not gonna say because i don't want to spoil it yeah i gave this book a four and a half the ending was like oh my gosh what the heck is happening crazy if you've read the other magnolia parks books definitely read this book it is a good time it's a roller coaster don't get me wrong but it is a good time okay so the next book i read was the fourth book in the series and the second book in daisy hates perspective so this is daisy hates the great undoing and this was my favorite book of the entire series i gave this one a five stars we follow three different characters perspectives in this book daisy christian and julian and i love seeing how things played out from their point of view. So the Daisy Hates books following the Magnolia Parks books happen kind of on the same timeline. So this book and this book happened on similar timelines. And I just love seeing these characters and their point of views and their interactions with other characters. It's such a interesting world and I love the socialite aspect. I also think these characters all just need therapy. Like they really do. What Julian did at the end, like ability to let go of someone you care about for their benefit in this book really just struck home with me. So this book got a five star for me. It was very, very, very good. I love this book and the ending, again, similar timeline to the Magnolia Parks book and the ending hit so much harder in this book. It destroyed me. I am like, 
very unwell. So now we have my last romance book of the month, which is Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. And this is the last book in Magnolia and BJ's perspective of the whole series. There will be two more Daisy Hates books. And wow, I love this book. It is longer than all the other ones. It's about 700 pages, but it was so important, I think, for us as readers and for the characters to have this book and like have the journey and healing they did in this book it was wow 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 i was like crying within the first 20 pages it was a time all of these books are emotional roller coasters so if you want to get thrown kind of into that world of it just being crazy these books are great options for you if you want to get stuck in a series that you're going to enjoy these books are great options i will say the british characters it's set in england and we just follow their friendships and journeys and relationships and we watch the characters grow and develop and change. And yeah, they're just rich. People on social media have kind of said it's the gossip girl of books, except the UK. So yeah, again, I do recommend these books. If you like any of those things, it is a good time to read. Moving on to the next category, we are going to be talking about fantasy books I read this month. And so I read two fantasy books, one being Bride by Allie Hazelwood and one being The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Both of these books were incredible. I'm going to talk about Bride first. So we are following a vampire bride and her werewolf husband. They like did not meet before their wedding day. They're kind of thrown together, kind of keep the peace between warring species. There is a lot of politics in this book. And I think that was like very interesting to me. I enjoyed that. It was kind of a slow burn romance as well, which was super enjoyable. And I will say though, like the second half of the book kind of flopped in the aspects that the spiciness overtook the plot a little bit and I wish we would have gotten more politics. But yeah, I really enjoyed the main character. I love Allie Hazelwood's writing. It's so witty. It's so enjoyable to read. This was also Allie Hazelwood's first attempt at a fantasy romance and I think she did a great job. So I gave this book a four stars. I enjoyed it, like I said, and I would recommend it to you if you enjoy Allie Hazelwood, if you enjoy fantasy romance, if you want just like a super quick read, she can like really suck you into a book. I think I read this in like two days. All right, the next fantasy book I read this month was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and I have never read anything by V.E. Schwab, but I really fell in love with her writing in this book. It was so lyrical. It was so poetic. I loved the main character and the ending. It was so good. So our main character is Addie LaRue. She was born, I think, in like the late 1600s and she made a deal. And so she lives a very, very long life and we get to see her live that very long life. And there's a little bit of romance in here, but there's also just the development of Addie and her emotions and kind of this journey that she takes um, of being basically invisible. And it's really beautiful. It's really poetic. It's very lyrical writing. I loved this book. I haven't read right Writing like that that I just like immediately fell in love with I gave it a five stars you guys this was a beautiful book if you enjoy fantasy or sci-fi or if you're just getting into fantasy or sci-fi this is a great book because it's more of magical realism because the events happen on earth so there's not a whole lot of world building there's just some like fantasy things right like she's living a very long life and she there's like these gods more so magical realism but yeah a great great option if you're just getting into fantasy or if you love fantasy or if you're just a fan of really great writing this is a book for you next we're going to talk about my fiction book that i read this month and that is a man called oaf i've seen bear town by this author and this was in like the little library in my apartment building so i was like oh cute i'll pick this up and read it and see how it is there was also a movie with tom hanks called a man called otto which i did start do think i like the book better but i'm only about halfway through the movie so can't really form an opinion yet so we're following this older gentleman named oaf and he's kind of like a grumpy grandpa who's like get off my lawn kids that's the vibe you get from him but he's so much more than that you see his journey through life this book made me sad but it was also very heartwarming and I just enjoyed it very much I thought the author did a great job I enjoyed his writing it wasn't very lyrical or poetic like the previous book I talked about but it was very very good I felt like I knew what was happening I was never confused and it was super enjoyable following Ov and his little kitty so if you just want a very sweet read um, with an interesting main character. This is a great book for you. It's really different. I haven't read a main character like Ove before and yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. It's nice to get a diff different perspective and 
different books sometimes because you find things you never thought you would. So yeah, great book, would recommend. Oh, did I say? Four stars. The next book we are going to be talking about is my YA thriller book I read this month, and that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is like going to be a TV show. It's a fan favorite on social media, and I enjoyed it as well. So I gave it a three and a half stars, but I did still enjoy it. So we're following Pip, a senior in high school, and she's doing her capstone project on a previous murder that happened in the town that she grew up in. And we're kind of following her trying to solve this murder, and things go around and around, and you're just like, oh my god. And throughout the book, I was like, every new character we were meeting, I was like, did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? So that was interesting. I do get the hype. It was super enjoyable, but I wasn't in love with it. I did want to know what happened, but it wasn't like, I need to know what happens. You know what I mean? Where some thriller books, I'm like, I need to know what happens. This one was more of like, I want to know what happens. Okay, I'm going to keep reading. There are two other books in this series, I'm pretty sure. And I think I said it's going to be a TV show. I'm not sure if I said that already. Would I recommend if you like thriller books, if you like YA books, if you like like following the mystery super close, this is a good book for you. Next, we're going to be talking about the nonfiction book I read this month. And that was How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. And I actually started this book towards the end of last year and I just never finished it. And it's also on Kindle Unlimited if you have that. So I guess you could call this a self-help book. It's the author is a psychologist. She's known as the holistic psychologist on social media and she's known for kind of enlightening yourself on your past and why you do the things that you do. I did enjoy this read. I'm not gonna give it a rating but it was really eye-opening and I do think a lot of people could benefit from reading this book. If you like nonfiction, if you want like a self-help book or if you're like struggling with things in your life or like just going through the motions of the days or you want to create a change, this is a good book to maybe get to know yourself a little better and yeah would recommend. All right, so the book I DNF this month was a nonfiction book and it was The Things We Make. I forget the author, but it's a book about engineering and I picked it up at the library because it sounded really interesting to me. It was kind of like the tagline got me, like the unknown history of the things we've made. I thought it'd be like the pyramids, tech, you know, how you build a cathedral, things like that. And I don't know, I just got into the first chapter and I don't know if the writing didn't resonate with me or what, so I didn't finish it. I returned it to the library and yeah, that was the DNF I had this month. I would say if you're into engineering, maybe give it a try, but it just is, wasn't it for me. And that's the fun thing about reading is it's so subjective. So the last two books I read this month were actually short stories. Amazon did this thing where they had six popular romance authors write little short stories and it was on Kindle Unlimited. And I read two of them this month. So the first one I read was The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. And I really enjoyed this. It was very quick read. I just read it one night before I was going to bed and it was super fun. I loved how they made me like connect to the characters and root for their relationship in less than 100 pages. It was super fun. I've never read anything by Christina Lauren but I will be reading books from them in the future. I want to pick some up because I really enjoyed this book. So yeah if you're just looking for a quick fun read these are great for you. I also read the one Abby Jimenez wrote and I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez a couple months ago and I really loved that. So when I saw that she wrote one I was like oh I want to read that. And that was The Worst Wingman Ever. It was very cute, very fun. I love Abby Jimenez's writing. So yeah, I would recommend both of these if you just want to pick up a quick read for bed, if you're maybe waiting at the doctor's office, at the car place, like, you know, just places you're waiting and you want to have like a quick little read, this is a great time. I do plan on reading the other four. So yeah, Kindle Unlimited, if you have that, would recommend these books. So that about wraps up all the books I read in March. And it was a really fun reading month, you guys. I enjoyed it a lot. If you guys have read any of these books, please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Thank you.